All right, welcome to the beta project with Trials Progression. And today I wanna to talk about moving in time with the bike. So this is really going to try to establish some automated patterns between my body posture and my throttle. So if I am not in good body position, especially when I'm trying to accelerate, going up a hill or up an obstacle or something of that sort, I'm gonna get my weight in the wrong place. Potentially my head's gonna be over the front and I'm not putting enough traction to the rear, especially when the conditions are slippery, this gets amplified. Today, I'm just gonna practice it right here on the driveway and give you guys a whole bunch of drills starting somewhat basic and then building up on it. So to start with, if I was a motocrosser, I might have my hips hinged and my head way out in front of the number plate, but I am not a motocrosser. I'm not trail riding. This is trials. So as I start to accelerate in order to get my center body mass forward, I'm going to be dipping my knees down. So you're going to hear me talk a lot about putting my knees towards that front axle or toes down. I need to get my center of gravity forward so that as I'm accelerating, I'm moving in time with the bike. I'm not getting caught behind the bike. So in order to kind of help you understand exactly what I'm talking about, we're gonna go ahead and show you specifically if I move my hips in the opposite direction of the acceleration. So if I take my hips from forward to back and give it a little gas, you guys probably all know what's gonna happen. The front wheel's gonna come up. What about if I just keep my knees and everything stiff? So elbows and knees stiff, give a little bit of gas. You'll see in this instance, the front wheel is still coming up because I'm getting caught behind the bike. So what we're trying to establish, and this is just gonna be in first gear, no clutch for right now, is moving in time with the bike. Dipping those knees forward as I'm giving it gas, both hands on the handlebars, we will progress this drill quite far and quite fast. But for now, I would just stay with whatever it is that you need to work on. I would encourage you to even film yourself because if you are videotaping yourself, you're gonna be able to recognize where your body posture is coming out of alignment, where it's not looking as it's supposed to. This proprioception of understanding where you are in space as it relates to the bike is something that you often just can't see. You need somebody else to point it out and say, oh, you're dipping your head forward. Ray calls it chicken pecking when you know, you're, you're leaning way forward like this because usually I don't have enough leg strength to properly squat into it. So my legs get tired, my posture goes to crap and I'm leaning forward. I'm just like staring at the number plate, especially if you have bad habits. It's something that you might need to see yourself do or have somebody else point out to you when your body posture is out of correct uh, you know, form. Another thing I love about the beta is how easy it is to start. This is something that I'm not sure if it's like this on all betas, you guys can comment down below, but I just gave it like a slow kind of compression kick just to get rid of the old air out of there and, and just kind of, you know, kind of load it and it started. And I was like, gee, many Christmas, I didn't even have to really give it the gusto. These things start really easy. Okay, so first example to paint the picture, kind of the opposite of what we're trying to do. If I move my hips from front to back and give it gas, you guys probably all know it's gonna wheelie. That's not what we're working on today, so let's go ahead and just try and keep my elbows stiff and my knees stiff. This is something that might be a good exercise for you to do, just keeping everything stiff and giving it gas. So now I'm gonna try this acceleration pattern, dipping my knees towards that front axle. I'm dipping in right as I'm starting to give it gas. I'm trying to keep my upper body fairly straight, my torso kind of good posture and move with the bike. We're rolling along, no clutch is used. So in this example, I'm really not trying to do a wheelie. I'm not trying to do anything other than get speed and stay in tune with the bike, stay in line with it. So we're gonna try a short throttle input and also a longer throttle input and see if I can keep my hips in the right space for both of them. So no clutch, first gear, just rolling along, short impulse. Now we're gonna do the same thing with a longer impulse. All right, now here's where you're gonna figure out if you actually have good body posture because we're gonna be taking a hand off of the handlebar. This is something that I think I've talked about in a previous video, but you'll know real quick if you were hanging onto the bars with a death grip or you were leaning on them by releasing one hand off. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up and down the driveway, just giving some power impulses, primarily going straight, trying to keep my body centered over the bike as it's accelerating. I'm gonna go ahead and use my front brake as well as the rear brake to slow down. I'm not using the clutch at all, just rolling along coasting and then give it another power impulse. With one hand, you're gonna quickly find out whether you're falling off the back or whether you're leaning too far forward. So this is gonna get a little more interesting. I would encourage you to wear a tether. If you're usually wearing your tether on your left hand and that's the hand that's not holding on, you could try it with a couple fingers. So, you know, instead of just going straight to letting go of the hand, you could do it with two fingers. That's probably a good idea. Then maybe go to a hand on the side of the handlebar, just, you know, kind of embracing it right there. And then you can actually take your hand away completely. 
So no clutch, I've just got two fingers on the bars. Same thing, no clutch, just hand on the side. And then now to your own comfort, we're gonna go ahead and take this hand away. When doing this drill, I'll find myself leaning my head too far forward instead of really getting my knees down. Really wanna focus on moving my hips. So my hips are here, they're getting closer. All right, so same idea. Let's try a short impulse and then a longer impulse. Now you can do this in first, you can do this in second, whatever you feel comfortable doing, but we just wanna build up your ability to move in time with the bike and get comfortable with it. So you got good body posture, you're remaining in time with the bike. Rolling along, one-handed, no clutch, short impulse. And then here's where it gets a little tricky because you get used to the short impulse and then the longer one. So I'm learning to trust the bike as it's moving. All right, that last one I felt pretty good about. I actually rolled onto the power a little bit slower. So instead of just impulse, it was kind of roll onto it. And that allowed me to stay in time with the bike. Now, if you're able to do these and do them well, we're gonna go ahead and progress it to the next, which is going to be from static. You probably see a lot of the big boy riders who have gotten no run up and they get hopped into position. They're in static balance. They rev out the engine and then go. Well, when they go, their hips are usually back to forward in order to assist that bike not losing traction because they're kind of using their 200 pounds or 150 pounds of body weight to bring the bike forward rather than have the bike pull them forward, but they're moving in time with the bike. One big aspect of this is going from a higher center of gravity to lower. So I'm starting up kind of tall or kind of high and back and then going down and low. By squatting down, we're putting more weight into that bike. As we compress the suspension, put weight into the bike, we're putting traction on the rear tire and helping it to drive forward rather than just pull a wheelie or spin out the back. So we're gonna do this just on good traction to start with. This is gonna be two hands on the bike handlebars. I'm not doing this one-handed. That would be impossible from static, but we're gonna go ahead and give this a try. You can take this to the next level as well by revving up the engine before letting out the clutch. So to start with, I'm just gonna be keeping the clutch engaged and just kind of letting out the clutch as I'm applying gas. So we're gonna start with that. There's a lot going on here already as far as body mechanics and timing. So we'll see if we can get this first. All right, so static balance. Once we get ready, hips are gonna be back just a little bit. And still not ready, gotta get balanced. Maybe look up where you wanna go. Try turning the wheel to the other side. Not quite as good at turning it to the right, so it's good practice. Look where I wanna go. So I'm not trying to do a wheelie, I'm just trying to get my hips in. Good body posture, moving time with the bike, not burning out the rear tire. Now to spice it up, this will be the last level of difficulty for today. We're gonna to go ahead and try and rev up the engine and then use the clutch to start moving the bike. So revving the engine before I let go, maybe half throttle uh, to start with, just whatever you're comfortable with, maybe just a third. Depends on how comfortable you are with that RPM. So that was my first attempt at that for the night and the front wheel lifted. So maybe I was revving a little too much or didn't get my weight far enough forward. So we're really gonna try and get those hips in. I'm still doing this in first gear. The goal is just acceleration and moving time with the bike. Don't really want a wheelie. Just getting comfortable with it. It does help to look forward as you're getting ready to take off. Rev it up. So thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, got some sort of value out of it, I'm gonna encourage you to give me a thumbs up. That means a lot so that YouTube can continue to push this content out to more people who like trials related stuff. Now, if you want more drills like this, I've got more on the website. You guys can find that at trialsprogression.com. Dot Tom. <laughs> I'm talking too fast. In addition to that, you can also download the app. I've got an app that's available on Google and the iOS uh, iTunes store that is simply called trials progression in there. I've got a free uh, course mini course on turning cambered turns. So we're going to get more into centering as it relates to turning, but I wanted to start today just with moving in time with the bike. This also helps you get over some of that RPM anxiety that's typically uh, present with all of us. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below if you got any questions.